Greetings, everybody, from Belsen Stadium in Jamaica, Queens, New York. It is match week five of MLS Next Pro. And we are in the big city tonight as New York City FC2 play host to Eastern Conference rivals, New England Revolution 2. Sean St. Jacques, our entire crew, thrilled to have you here with us on a beautiful night in the Big Apple. Two fierce rivals in the Eastern Conference of MLS Next Pro meeting tonight with a lot of work to do in the East as well. New York City FC2 looking for their first win of the campaign that will take them right back towards the playoff line in the East. New England would potentially, pending results elsewhere, get above the playoff line if they could pick up their second victory of this campaign. These two teams have always met and it's been fierce fixtures in years past. And of course these two teams are expecting to be above the playoff line in these early weeks of the season. And of course at the end, We'll see which of these two teams has the potential to turn a corner tonight. Get a chance now to jump into the starting lineups for these two teams. But before we do that, we have a chance to preview the matchup for you. It's the first meeting between these two since June 14th of last season. Again, it's always tight when these two teams get together, not just at this level, but of course at the first team level as well. These two cities have a fierce rivalry as fierce as any, really, in all of American sports. And these two will have a chance tonight to plant the flag, as it were, not just in the rivalry, but to make a statement in the Eastern Conference as well. And of course, both teams are coming off of tough results. They're hoping to bounce back in a big way tonight. And with this matchup in the cards, we'll see who will get the opportunity to really move things forward in the right direction. Here's the starting lineups for both teams. Matt Pilkington's NYCFC team looks like this. Jonathan Jimenez has been rolling as of late, as has Maximo Carrizo. Those are the two that'll help to lead the attack up front. Jake Rosansky gets the start against his former side in New England. And Taylor Calhera captains the side. Matt Pilkington's been very impressed with the way he's been going about things as of late. So we'll see how the attack goes for New York tonight with a very strong 11. Richie Williams brings this 11 with him for New England Revolution 2. It is jam-packed with talent. Malcolm Fry, Jack Panayotu, and of course, Tiago Suarez, some of the first teamers that get the start. It's Jacob Jackson's first start of the season for Revs 2, also a first teamer. Victor Souza leads the back line. Ulger Escobar and Gavork Diarbian, who gets his first Revs 2 start help to lead the line in the attack. It's a very experienced team for Richie Williams and New England Revolution too. Colby Quinones, one of the men that gets the start in the back. It's his 50th career start with New England Revolution too. He's been with Revs too since their USL League One days back in 2020. He's also starting on his 21st birthday, hoping to make it a memorable occasion for his team and for Richie Williams and his side who are hoping to come to New York and leave with all three points. Both of these teams have a lot to prove. It's been a bit of a stop-start beginning to this MLS Next Pro campaign for both teams. The big thing on the agenda for New York City is to get their first win of the campaign. Nothing less would be satisfying. And for New England, yes, they've won already this season, but they haven't won since. So they're hoping to pick up a second victory of the campaign tonight. New England will get us started. They'll be going from left to right in their road whites with the red shorts. And it will be New York City their dark blues, the orange, light blue, and white trim. Eislin Pexenar is our center official. His whistle gets us started from the Big Apple here at Belsen Stadium in Jamaica, Queens, New York. It's always a fierce rivalry, whether it's 
New York against Boston, New York against New England. Doesn't matter the sport, doesn't matter the level. It's always high intensity. There's always something to play for. And it tends to be more than just bragging rights on the line. In these two cities, when these two organizations, frankly, tend to meet. And tonight is no exception on MLSNextPro.com. Sean St. Jacques, our entire crew, thrilled to have you with us on the campus of St. John's University. We'll see how New York is able to begin things tonight. They're going to get on the front foot pretty quickly here. Aravalo up to the far side. Into the middle, played out by Calhara, and it was a searching ball inside the penalty area. Inside of a minute for New York. It's going to trickle out for a throw. New York City FC 2 coming off of back-to-back -back games against New York Red Bulls 2. They were able to beat them 4-2 in the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. That booked New York City a place in the third round against Hartford Athletic. The USL Championship as the City Boys have a free kick. However, on April 10th, New York City lost to their rivals, New York Red Bulls, by a score of 1-0 here in the league. So, bit of a split decision in the end against their Cross River rivals. Hoping to use that as a bit of motivation to take care of other Eastern Conference opposition here tonight. Also, a fierce rivalry between these two clubs. Early set piece chance here, Ronald Aravalo. Bends in a beauty. It's headed away by McIntosh, the teenager. Recycled here by Bayera, and then he loses out on the far side. Malcolm Fry gets New England going on the front foot. For New England Revolution 2, a tough defeat against Cincinnati on the road four days ago. It was a really good start, frankly. For the Revs, Marcos Diaz scored inside of four minutes. Richie Williams and his side were feeling good early. That did not continue in a mere daily brace. Within a few minutes of each other, the two goals ended up sinking the Revs. They lost by two goals to one. And if the history of this fixture is any consequence, it is tied at the moment between these two in next pro. Two wins apiece, two losses apiece, two draws apiece as well. Talked about that last meeting, June 14th, 2023. It was in New England. The Revs won by a Malcolm Fry goal to nil. Christian McFarland settles things down a tick for New York. Sent over the top when McIntosh was a bit lucky there with his header, but he does find Jacob Jackson. His first start with Revs 2 this season. He's a first teamer. He's been playing games on and off with Revs 2 since 2022. He has accumulated 122 saves and eight clean sheets in games played for Revs 2 over the years. Lovely ball played out to the teenager McIntosh, who's really impressed. Richie Williams and his staff so far this season, the youngster. Plays in Jack Panayotu, and he plays a lovely ball in behind. Chance for the opening goal, oh! Phenomenal save by Alexander Rando. First time his name's been called, and he comes up with the goods for New York. Wonderful attack from the Revs. It's a better save. Panayotu threading the ball through. It's a really good cut back and strike. Better stop from Rando down to his left. And the first big chance of the match is kept out. Well, Rando has plenty of experience to his name with New York City as well.
Tons of experience, tons of young talent. Tons of talent, period, for both sides. Not on display, it's just one of those high caliber matchups that MLS Next Pro has to offer. Ball played ahead by Malcolm Fry. Couldn't quite find Gavork Diarbian, who was just robbed a few moments ago by Rando in his first start for Revs 2. chance to catch up with Matt Pilkington, the New York City 2 coach, earlier in the week. Says that obviously the lack of finishing against New York Red Bulls 2 in the league was a concern. They did so well with that in the Open Cup. It didn't quite translate over into next pro. This team's looking to finish off this opportunity. Again, it's a really good chance. This time it's McFarlane at the back stick who couldn't quite redirect it. It's a bit of the same that Matt Pilkington's been talking about. Great build up, Jimenez plays a perfect ball out to the far side. It's a searcher across the face of goal. But Christian McFarlane was just a step too far behind. However, he has been impressed with a number the New York City players, Matt Pilkington, he's loved the way Taylor Calhara has come in in these early weeks with a new group for him. He's been able to really thrive, he has the captain's armband on tonight. Not sure what Matt Pilkington and his staff thinks of how well he's adjusted. Next, how Jonathan Shore, who's on the bench to start the evening, has been playing, and Maximo Carrizo, Jonathan Jimenez. Says all of them have been coming along really nicely as the season has gone through its early weeks. So that's a poor giveaway. Lovely ball. It's gonna be an opportunity for Diarbian who stayed on side for New England. And then Panayotu finishes beautifully. Wonderful goal from New England. Jack Panayotu scores for the visitors. And the Revs have the lead here at Belson. All from a very cheap giveaway. Wonderful ball played in behind. DRBN runs onto it beautifully. It was Escobar who starts it. And it's finished off by Jack Panayotu. A beauty of a left booted strike. It's just about what New England have deserved in these opening minutes. Both teams have had chances, but after a couple were spurned by New York at the other end, New England pounce, and Panayotu gives them a 1-0 lead. There were players around Jack Panayotu defensively, but none of them closed him down, and when he gets an opportunity on that left peg of his, it's very rare that he misses. It's one of Richie Williams' first team boys come down to help the cause that's given New England the lead. A fast start for both, but that clinical, that cutting edge has allowed New England for a second game running that should be mentioned to take an early lead. They scored inside of four minutes against Cincinnati. Took them a few extra minutes here in New York, but they've scored first again. A bit too overzealous there, Ultra Escobar. Concedes a free kick to New York City. And the ball's allowed to bounce in behind. The Revs deal with it. New York City regains possession all the way back to Rando. Of course, without that Rando save, New England could have been 2 0 up already. The ball's going to run away from the City boys here, but it's picked back up. Calhara. 
Oh, it's into the middle, and it's an equalizer. Touch tall by Jonathan Jimenez. He continues to have a strong start to the season for New York City. And in a flash, it's 1-1. Oh, looked like the chance had gone. It was overrun initially, kept alive by Carrizo. And then it's a wonderful ball across by Calhara to Jimenez. It's Jimenez's first goal in the league this season. And as quickly as New York fell behind, they're back level. What a seesaw start here in the big city. It's nearly a carbon copy of New England's last match. They go ahead early, and within the half, they're pegged back. Now we told you how much talent was on the pitch. And remember, Jonathan Jimenez hasn't scored in the league this season, but he's been red hot in the Open Cup, had the hat trick against New York Red Bulls, two to knock them out in round two. His first next pro goal of the season pegs New England back. And give credit to the likes of Carrizo and Calhara. They did not give up on the play. And boy, did they get a reward for doing that, thanks to Jonathan Jimenez's finish. The way back it goes for Jackson. It took a ricochet. Escobar wins it back for the Revs. It was pushed ahead looking for Malcolm Fry, but it's given away. New York City will recycle the possession. New York City have only kept two clean sheets in this fixture against New England. Let's see why it always tends to be at least a few hammer blows landed when these two get together. There was only the one goal between them back in June of last season. We've had two. 13 minutes had been played. Carrizo in some trouble. Escobar slipped and then tried to keep it alive. It was clever, but nobody in a white shirt there to help the cause. And then McFarlane with a rare miscue. Gives it right back to New England. early start to this game reminds me of one thing that was said by Richie Williams in the build-up to this game, the New England Rams 2 head coach. Said that we got off to positive starts in the recent games against Carolina Corps, which they won, and then Cincinnati as well. They said at times we haven't shown enough of the same urgency and aggressiveness to compete. His words, he said at times we've let teams back in. He said, Carolina, we played much better after the down period in the match where we were up and down a bit. And he said against Cincinnati, we suffered adversity and then obviously the red card didn't help. But he said the first half of that game at times was unacceptable. The way they didn't make it difficult on them. He says it was a silly red card, but the four players that came on in the second half, they had great effort. She thought we were the better team from that point on, but the sum of that was that New England need to be more consistent as a group. It just hasn't quite been there at times at the start of the season. Again, these are early days, early weeks of the campaign. That was the biggest takeaway Richie Williams has had from these recent weeks of Revs 2 play. It's funny in a way because that's pretty much what Matt Pilkington said about his boys for New York City. 
the biggest improvement he said for them was improving the consistency. They're trying to turn around an early deficit here with Carrizo on it. Benzi and Beauty and Jimenez has scored again! A brace inside of 16 minutes for Jonathan Jimenez. And New York City have turned the tables on New England from 1-0 down. It's 2-1. A brace for Jimenez. He's already on a hat trick. And it's almost a carbon copy of the first goal. Carrizo to Jimenez. First with his boot. This time he uses his head. New York City have a 2-1 lead. Incredible start here at Belson. Oh, and actually we're being told that it's gonna go down as an own goal against Demario McIntosh for New England. Well, I would like to see another look at that. It looked like Jimenez got the last touch on that. In the grand scheme, New York City aren't going to care too much. It's gone in. And this rip-roaring start has seen New England take the lead and now fall behind. Incredible early resolve from New York City. Whether he gets credit for the second goal, we'll wait and see. But great start for Jonathan Jimenez, who continues his red-hot form. He's involved one way or the other. We're off to a really fast start here in the big city. I must say, if that does go down in the end as an own goal, it's a bit harsh on McIntosh. Again, I'm not even sure he got a touch onto that. If he did, he didn't know too much, frankly. been so, so good for the Revs at the start of the season. Richie Williams was just glowing about him. Well, we talked about him earlier in the week. This portion of the match is brought to you by St. John's University, the official undergraduate partner of New York City FC2. He's 16 years old. Mario McIntosh. Had him earlier in the year against Philly. He really played well there at Subaru Park. This team have some defending to do here. New York City are really rolling. Could be a third. Oh, fantastic save by Jackson to deny Calhara. Could have easily been a third for New York. Well, it just opened up again for City. It's good build up play. I don't know, Yave out wide, and then it's a lovely layoff. Calhara's shot. Brilliant save from Jacob Jackson. New England certainly needed it. Well, Taylor Calhara couldn't believe his luck. He hit it so sweetly, but you can see hands on head after Jacob Jackson saves it with an acrobatic lunge. Now then, Bulma under pressure. He's fouled. It's a free kick for New England. So much has happened, it doesn't feel like only 20 minutes have gone by. It's like we've had almost half an hour already. That's how much action we've seen here in Queens. Did it away up ahead by McIntosh, slowed down. Leong and company. Rosansky, the former New England man, is fouled, free kick for New York. It's 
it's a big game for both teams, just considering the fact that coming into the night, into the day, I should say, New York City 13th in the East. New England started the day in 10th. They've already dropped to 11th in the live table. They would stay down there. They can't find a result here in Queens tonight. Again, this was a Revs 2 team that made it to the Eastern Conference Final a season ago, and a lot of those guys are back for this season. Number two seed into the campaign. And they got through everybody they faced except the two time defending Eastern Conference champions in Columbus. Oh, another late challenge, this time former teammates collide. Rosansky taken down by Malcolm Fry, and Fry sees yellow for the challenge. Well, one of those where Malcolm Fry had already committed. And he was not going to pull out of the challenge. Second look at it. He could see Fry had already began a full sprint. It was too late for him to pull out of the challenge. And he is booked for it. And New York City are back with the ball. Field by Rando. Both goalkeepers have made really good saves in this first half. Ooh, that's a giveaway. DRBN is in for New England. Oh, couldn't quite get it past Rando. And it's lifted over. Rando got a touch onto that. Wait to see. Another look, it's a silly giveaway. Second time New York City has done that when I'm not too sure Rando did get a touch onto that. I think DRBN may have lifted it over him and out of play. And it does restart with a city goal kick. Oh, another one here where Rando has to be aware and alert. He really fell into the path of the work DRBN again. Here comes New York the other way, Calhera. And Calhera. Just about ran out of room. He does hit it off a New England player. It's a corner for New York City. Ooh, the corner's taken quickly. Ooh, coming together on the edge of the penalty area. It's gonna be a free kick. Although Ronald Aravalo's appealing that the challenge happened on the 18 yard box line, which would potentially mean a penalty. The referee saw it differently. It's just gonna be a free kick. Well, that looked borderline. It was tough to tell from our vantage point. Certainly close. The referee obviously had a much better view of it. Just gonna be a set piece. Can New York City create from this? It does look like it's going to be Carrizo who will take. And Carrizo tried to bend it on target. Tough angle to do that, especially trying to beat Jacob Jackson. It's out of play. In a lot of ways tonight at Next Pro, it's been Goals galore. And over the last two days, had a boatload of them. And the last next pro play, and this game is adding itself to that list. SKC2 just beat Houston by four goals to nil. Big win for Benny Failhaber's group. Timbers 2 1, 2 0 over Colorado. That's another gigantic win. So that was handled by McIntosh. New York Red Bulls, too, winning 4-3 on penalties after a 5-5 game against Chicago earlier today in Jersey. 
New York had a 4-0 lead in that game, so credit to Coach Ludo's group for getting a point. Could have had two. Of course, yesterday, Chattanooga put six past Miami in a 6-2 win. We're a far away from being done here in the Big Apple as that's gonna be a chance for DRBN, but he's in an offside position. Four, two, fives, and a six goal output this weekend. Of course, this game had three goals in the opening 12 minutes. And since then, both teams have been trying to plug things up defensively. But both teams have come close has been rather open and it continues to be that way with Aravalo down this far side. The pass inward towards Carrizo is cut out by Malcolm Fry. New England can't do anything with it in transition. That ball finds its way through to Aravalo. And closing down by Victor Souza. Here's Diarbian. Lays it off, Panayotu over the top, and Escobar is offside for New England. He does finish the job, but it will not count. Flag goes up on this near side. Would have been Escobar's first goal of the season. This portion of the match is brought to you by Adidas, the official kit supplier for New York City FC2. Really good start to this one here in Jamaica, Queens. Shout St. Jacques, our entire crew. Thrilled to bring this one to you. We told you this fixture tends to provide drama. Here comes the next chapter of it, DRBN. Oh thought he was in behind, even looked at the assistant to see that the flag was initially down. However, now it goes up. Nearly a chance to break through, but DRBN is caught again by the assistant's flag. Rosansky switches the point of attack. Matt Leong will think better of it, plays it back for Rando. Almost played up ahead towards Jimenez, Aravalo. Tries to keep it alive for New York. Rovic to the far side, it's then popped out of play. Just over the head of Matt Pilkington in his technical area. It'll stay with his boys here on the far side as we approach the half an hour mark. on his 21st birthday, wins the ball initially. New England will settle for a throw. Two goals by Jimenez coming within five minutes of each other. That does sound like everyone's still going back and forth as to whether that was an own goal or not. Stats I just checked again has given it to Jimenez, so we'll wait for official confirmation on that, but at the moment, Bit of a question mark surrounding it. it. Did look like live that it was Jimenez's goal. 
Jacob Jackson made an incredible save to deny Calhera earlier in the half as well. That team probably could have easily had three or four already. And this half's gone along. It's really been back and forth. Now that here's Malcolm Fry. Barovic had it initially. It's all the way back for a reset for Souza. Up ahead by Barovic. Fry tries to get it back to him, but he's dispossessed. Reverse ball by Jimenez opens things up for New York City. Then it's taken away, a chance here for Bulma for New England. They have some numbers here. Older Escobar. Escobar shoots, parried by Rando, cleared by McFarlane. Escobar picks up the pieces. McIntosh. Bulma. He's eased off of it in the end by Rosansky. Aravalo leads the break for New York. Aravalo has options either side. It's gonna be a chance for Carrizo! It's a wonder strike! Maximo Carrizo with a beauty of a finish. And New York City, who once trailed in this first half, have a 3-1 lead. A wonderful break led by Aravalo. Can't forget about that. But it's a cracker of a finish by Maximo Carrizo. Brilliantly done. One of the boys that's been really promising this season for Matt Pilkington's group. He scores his first league goal of the campaign. And all of a sudden in this first half, it's been New York City running riot over the Revs. It's a two goal cushion. Two from Jimenez and now one from Carrizo. And for New England, it feels like deja vu all over again in the first half. The only difference is that since he had a 2 1 lead, New York's turned it into a 3 1 lead. Richie Williams' side is going to have to try and mount a comeback. It's just the start to a game that New York City would have been hoping for in search of their first next pro win of the season. It might not be done yet in this first half. Aravalo is fouled. It's a free kick. Referee wanted to get a full look at the picture. It's going to be a yellow card for Olger Escobar for a multitude of challenges adding up. And it's another opportunity. Can New York really put themselves in pole position? Aravalo has already taken a set piece from this almost exact same position earlier in the half. And he tried to find a teammate, so I don't think he'll try to test Jackson from here. He's already gonna be a tough customer regardless. Just over 10 minutes plus stoppage time left in the half. Aravalo is gonna test Jackson. And it soars out of play. This portion of the match is brought to you by Etihad Airways, the official airline partner 
of New York City FC2. Under 10 minutes plus stoppage time left. And what's been a really entertaining half. He won too many dribbles there from the teenager McIntosh. Here comes New York the other way, McFarland. Still McFarland, he's gonna keep on running. Good effort by McIntosh to get back. McFarland into the middle, it pinballs around. Last off, Jimenez. It's gonna be a goal kick. Jimenez trying to plead his case, but it didn't look like it hit off of him last. Potentially, of course, Jimenez on a first half hat trick. Despite his really strong finishes, Carrizo might have the goal of the first half to this point. A wonderful finish. And Pilkington won't be smiling from ear to ear, at least not externally. Because there's a long way to go, and New England are not going to go, uh, go down quietly. There's no question about that. But he has to feel encouraged by the way his team has responded after falling behind early. There's just been something about these early leads for the Revs. They just can't quite hold on to them. It has happened to them yet again. Here's Bulma. Remember, New England also had an early lead at Philadelphia. In their first game of the season, they lost that game too. It's becoming a bit of a pattern for Richie Williams' group. continues on this Sunday that everything that MLS Next Pro touches turns to goals at the moment. Every game has had multiple, if not a truckload of them. We're far from done here in the Big Apple. Here's Panayotu. He scored once. He tries to score again, but his shot sputters wide of Rando's net. a goal fest during match week five. I think that is fair to say. That might even be an understatement. Of course, there's still three more games later on tonight that could add on to the tally. But Texas against Tacoma, those two teams are certainly capable of scoring goals. Real Monarchs against the town. Plenty of talent on display there. We'll see if Dan DeGeer and his group can pick up another impressive road win. And then another edition of El Trafico. LAFC 2 against Ventura County. The artist formerly known as Los Dos. Here's Aravalo. Already has an assist. Tries to dance his way past McIntosh, who's having none of it, and clears it away. Move on the turn there by Calhara, who's already been denied a goal in this first half. And in the end, it's going to sputter out. It's a New England throw with just over five minutes left in the half. And the wind has really started to pick up a bit here in Jamaica, Queens. And that ball was intended for McIntosh, not able to get it to him. Back to New York.
Well, they sent up ahead. It was a brief chance for Drew Baiera on that far side. He's certainly been active. Carrizo pressuring Quinones and wins a throw in for New York City. Giveaway, McIntosh reacts quickly enough to get it ahead. Here's a chance for Escobar. Paniotu. McIntosh. Paniotu. Bending it into the penalty area. Escobar. And it's all a moot point. The flag is up. New York City don't waste any time getting on with it. New England were briefly caught napping there. It's Calhera. Carrizo, lovely skill to get past Malcolm Fry. Carrizo. Aravalo has his shot deflected. Aravalo plays it right through McIntosh. He thought he was fouled. Referee sees nothing wrong with it. On we go. Bulma trying to shield the ball away. It's going to be a New England free kick. New York City are contending that the same call should have gone their way moments earlier. Seemingly more of a nudge on the back end there that allows New England to alleviate a bit of this pressure from New York City. Can the Revolution get a goal back before the end of the half? This is going to continue to be all New York City since those opening eight minutes. And a Yotu scored to culminate that great start in the eighth minute, but two goals in five minutes from Jimenez and then a beauty of a finish from Carrizo. We've seen New York City not just turn it around, but build a two goal lead. Now that a push and a chase, DRBN. He's lightning as he gets into the penalty area, but can't find a teammate. Rando cuts off the pass. It's a beautiful move by DRBN. Just couldn't find a teammate with the cross. And you can see a moment there for New York City to break, but Rosansky couldn't control it as the ball went past him. Ooh, that's another late challenge from Malcolm Fry, who's already been booked. And the referee's reminding him of that here. That was almost a carbon copy of his first challenge. Malcolm Fry is going to be let off the hook. Well, I think if he wasn't already booked, he would have been booked for that. Malcolm Fry's a bit lucky there. Where he gives him a lifeline, as it were, to stay in the match. Another one like that, I don't think he's going to be as lucky. Here's Aravalo. Chance for Calhera. Tried to squeeze it through. Jackson could only knock it down. And it's cleared out of play. It's going to be a throw in for New York. Jacob Jackson did not quite read that correctly. And forced a very quick clearance. From Tiago Suarez. It's going to take us down to three minutes of first half stoppage time here in the Big Apple. Aravala wins it off of McIntosh, but he couldn't find Jimenez. 
pull which way. It's going to be a New England throw. Bulma. You can see what the idea was there to try to pick out Fry. It's hit a bit too firmly in the end. Final two minutes of what's been a really thrilling half here. Incredible response from New York City after trailing early. They lead 3-1. They're trying to really stamp their authority at the end of the half, oh, and Jimenez might sneak in behind. Was he pushed down inside the penalty area? The appeals are waved away. Aravalo gets back onto it here for New York. Maybe Jimenez was looking for it. Referee didn't seem too interested. Carrizo. Rosansky forced back. Leong on a recycle for New York. McFarlane. Aroyave. Oh, Aravalo was trying a little cheeky dummy. It actually finds its way back to him. Miscued by Suarez. Aravalo for McFarland down the line. McFarland gets past two, challenges. Calhera into the middle, touched away by Quinones. One back again by McFarland. And again, New York resets. Final 30 seconds of the half. Still time for one more New York chance. Calhera again. Tries to cut it back. Ball still in play. Carrizo gets past Fry. Rosansky. Rosansky loses out to Panayotu. So time for maybe one last Revs rebuttal. Hannah Yotu is upended. And there won't be enough time to take the free kick as the half ends here in Queens. Another MLS Next Pro Goal Fest is broken out here in the Big Apple. The opening goal from Jack Panayotu canceled out by a brace from Jonathan Jimenez. And then a wonder strike from Maximo Carrizo. And we have a thrilling game on our hands here in Jamaica, Queens. Our score at the half is New York City 3, New England 1. Halftime is coming up in just a few moments, but first we check in on the Generation Adidas Cup. GA Cup has been tremendous again here in 2024. We did crown a champion at the GA Cup at the under 15 division. James Hadnot has more. Today we crown a champion on the campus of IMG Academy at the 2024 Generation Adidas Cup U15s. Valencia, Toulouse, and Mark makes it happen as he's done all tournament. But it's a spacing before he gets on the ball. It's Santi who comes centrally, and it's Mark that breaks the line with his run. The way he just opens up his hips, so clean, so classy, 1-0 Valencia. And then insurance always necessary in a final. Stepping up is Amadou. What a strike. As Jay requires so much attention, he plays it right into the path of his number nine. There's information on it. He needs to hit it first time. Just ropes this thing in the top quarter. That's two goals for Valencia. And more importantly, they are your U15 GA Cup champions. Valencia victorious. The final 2-0 over Toulouse. 
Right under 15 final there, the under 17 championship match came down to a shootout. David Goss has the details. Ask for a better final here at the 2024 Generation Adidas Cup. The clear two best teams, a clash of titans, a clash of styles as the Philadelphia Union against the LA Galaxy. Diego Rossio gets the scoring started once again for the third straight game. Fantastic technique from Rossio to let this thing come across, but it's a reaction from the Galaxy. As Miller goes by line, the space is the cutback. Clever run from Moreno. Get it on target, you give yourself a chance from Vanny. It's an uh-oh moment for Atkinson, but it's 1-1 at this point in time. Dylan Vanny equalizes just two minutes later. Adam Dunbar gets on the end of this one, cannot finish. Mati Albert follows it up, and Dunbar with the go-ahead goal. There to clean it up, but Atkinson, you want to parry it wide and away from pressure. 2-1 LA Galaxy, but you knew the Union will never go down without a fight. First it's Sidey, then it's Johnson, and just watching the center of your screen, it's Sullivan. Johnson has the composure, the patience to let this play develop and the ongoing run to advance yourself as a midfielder is so important for Sal Sullivan. Little dance from Johnson. Thank you very much. 2-2, Two -two, David Goss. Kevin Sullivan equalizes, but regulation was not enough to get between these two teams and we went to a shootout. Atkinson with the massive save to keep his team alive. Neil Pierre scores it in the sixth round. Securis puts it over and back-to-back -back GA Cup championships for the Philadelphia Union. Great redemption story for Philly as they are the under-17 champions. Well, we talk a lot about the path for the players to the MLS system, but the path for the coaches is equally important. Let's meet Erin Ridley and her journey into MLS coaching in San Jose. Uh, my name is Aaron Lycan Ridley, and I'm the head coach of the U15 boys here at the San Jose Earthquakes. I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee originally. Uh, I was a multi-sport athlete. I played uh, soccer, of course. I played softball, basketball, tennis, swimming, cross-country track. Um, so a lot of different sports, but fell in love with soccer, and that was the one for me. Like so many kids, Aaron's introduction to the game came through family. I started playing soccer at the age of 11. And my brother and I joke because my mom signed him up first and he's younger than me and of course I couldn't let my younger brother do anything competitively that he was doing that I wasn't doing. In 1994, the United States hosted the Men's World Cup, which boosted the popularity of soccer around the country. It wasn't long after that that we had the 1994 World Cup here in the United States and I was completely captivated. I was 11 years old for the 94 World Cup and um, definitely fell in love with the U.S. team at that point and followed the game ever since. Erin played as a goalkeeper, falling in love with the position early. She attended the University of Virginia, where she was part of the number one recruiting class in the country. Unfortunately, during her time in Charlottesville, Erin suffered numerous injuries, which steered her in the direction of becoming a coach. I was really lucky that I went right into college coaching after I was done with, with playing and, and I fell in love with it for its own sake. Coaching would lead Erin back to her hometown, where she would coach the women's team of one of MLS Next Pro's newest clubs, Chattanooga FC. So I was the head coach of the Chattanooga FC women, which is in the WPSL. And that was an incredible experience for me. One, because that's home for me, Chattanooga's home. So it kind of felt full circle coming back. My first impression of her was, was that she, um, first of all, knew the game very well at a super high level. Um, even back then, that, that, was, that was super clear. My husband and I moved back to my hometown to help me recover, and I was really lucky to get into that community and become the head coach there. And the first year was really challenging. It was all local players. I had been uh, coming back from this, this brain injury and only had gotten back on the field in time to get open tryouts. And they were the most amazing, bought-in, hardworking women. And I had players from 16 to 32. I had young mothers on the team. I had high school players on the team. I think we won one game that year. And that set the foundation for the next year. And the following year, we had not only the sport of community, the Chattahooligans there are incredible. 
Um, but we had, I was able to recruit nationally and we brought in top players and we were able to make an incredible run and put together, but it started with that first year and this like spark and love of the game. And one of my favorite parts about that is how many of those women have continued to play, they extended their careers or even that they're now coaching. And I think that's a huge mark of success from, from that time. She expects a, lo a lot out of her players. She expects a, a super high level of, of commitment and work rate and all those great you know, qualities that you'd expect in a strong player. But, um, but at the end of the day, like there's, there's compassion there to where the players knew, they always knew that she cared about their best interests. Um, so even when she pushed them, um, it, it was from the right place and everybody always knew that. Erin also coached at Baylor School, a boarding school in Chattanooga. While on staff at Baylor School, Erin coached Darrell's oldest daughter, Zoe. As a parent, what, you know, whether your kid's in athletics or not, you want them to be around teachers and coaches who, who care for them as human beings first. Um, I don't think anybody puts their kid in sports for any other reason than to have them mentored and, and nurtured. And, and I, I saw that as a parent. Um, it, you know, Aaron is the kind of coach that, that you want your, your kid to play for. Um, and then on the professional side, she's the kind of coach you want involved in your organization because of everything that she stands for. Her level of excellence that she expects of, you know, not only her players, but of herself. She's constantly been growing. You've seen that in, her, in the way her career has evolved. Erin's time at Chattanooga FC is remembered fondly for her impact on and off the pitch. A coach of her pedigree will always draw the attention of U.S. soccer. In 2018, the U.S. U-17 girls national team was preparing for the World Cup and Erin was asked to help out. During that time, she met Luciano Fusco, a member of the Quakes organization, and Andreas Deza. Andres was the girls director at the time and uh, had worked with Luciano for a long time. Um, and they were in a transition moment where Luciano was actually being, um, he was being pulled into the boys' side. And when we were on the trip in South Korea, Andreas had mentioned that he needed a coach and um, he wanted me to come check things out. And I, my husband and I flew out and we were really blown away by our visit that we had here. And it was, it was amazing. So I came in, I was named the U19 head coach. Uh, I also took over the U17s and I was also doing the goalkeepers as well and it was a really special environment. We had so many top players in that group. We won a national championship with the 15s. We were the, we were the coach of the, you know, staff of the year uh, for the DA on the west, west side. I think it's been a really unique experience being the first female head coach for the MLS platform. Like that is, that is something that I really am humbled by and I don't take for granted ever. Like having the opportunity here at the Quakes to coach at a high level on the women's side and then come in and coach at a high level on the men's side um, has been really special to me. While inspiring others isn't what Erin set out to do when she began her coaching journey, her path has made her an inspiration to many. Hopefully women see what I've been able to do and feel like they belong here and that they, um, they, they see themselves there as well. And, and not only that, but that the young men that I coach also see that as normal as well. And I have a great relationship with the guys that I coach here and I'm, I'm very, very proud of them. And it's very rewarding to be their coach. I was really struck by a conversation I had with a parent that said, look, it's so important. You always hear as a woman, it's so important for women to hear, to see women, to see it, to be it. But I had a parent in, Chatt in Chattanooga, Tennessee tell me, it's so important for my son to see you. And I, I never forgot that. It really changed the way I looked at things is that not only is it important for women to see uh, other women doing things that they aspire to do, but it is important for young men to see that. And I take that responsibility very seriously as well. Erin is vocal about more opportunities being afforded to women in sports. I think the landscape has changed in that there are certainly more professional opportunities for women across the board. The, the level of professionalism on the women's side has been increasing exponentially over the last 20 years and we're seeing huge gains from the way that women can use the platform to um, make a career out of playing and then make a career out of coaching. We're seeing um, how normal it is to see female referees uh, taking the lead. We're seeing um, female strength coaches and female nutritionists, uh, analysts. We're seeing lots more women involved in staffs. I would say that if you love the game, that there is a place for you. And when it comes to coaching, it's about giving back. I think that one of the, my favorite parts of coaching is that I know what was transmitted to me and the passion that the people that I worked with, that they had for the game, 
and I know what it added to my love of the game and I hope that I can continue to pass that on. So my message to women is that they belong on the sideline, they belong in the game and that they have a voice that is valuable and, and, and I think too often when they don't see themselves there it's easy to tell themselves that it's too much work or they probably wouldn't be welcome there anyway and, and that's just not true and that they have the power to, to write their own story and to be part of something that um, they get to set the path towards and uh, whether it's coaching boys or girls, men or women, uh, you know, I think that the most important thing that women can see is just to get started. If they love something, if they have a passion for it, there's a place for them. John St. Jacques back here with you at the half between New York City and New England. We jump into the halftime highlights here and it begins with New England on the front foot, the RBN. Denied by a great save from Alexander Rando. And that was the early moment that saw New England really get into the attack more often. And then DRBN in the attack again off a giveaway. Plays in Jack Panayotu, who scores his team leading second next pro goal of the season. That was in the eighth minute to give the Revs the lead. However, they haven't scored since. And it's been all New York City after that. Great ball in from Calhera. Great finish by Jonathan Jimenez to equalize just three minutes after New York City fell behind and they were far from done. Jimenez would get on the end of another cross five minutes later. This time Carrizo picks him out. Wonderful header and he scores again to give New York City a 2-1 lead at the time. But New York City kept on pushing after that. Wonderful running transition initially from Ronald Aravado. He lays it off for the aforementioned Maximo Carrizo, who scores a firecracker to give New York City a 3-1 lead. Both teams could have scored a few more times in the first half, but it's 3-1 to New York with 45 minutes to play. We looked at highlights, here are the halftime match stats, a ton of shots in total, 15 between the two sides, eight of them have been on target. And Matt Pilkington hoping his side would be a little bit more clinical in this game, house three goals out of five shots on target, half of the shots in total have been on frame, not too shabby from the City Boys in search of their first MLS Next Pro win of this 2024 campaign. Lots of work for Richie Williams and his group to do with 45 minutes to go. They certainly can't count the revs out. They have a bit of a mountain to climb in the second half after it was going so swimmingly for them at the start of the match. Again, it just feels like a number of games that New England have been through this season. An early goal has gotten them off to a good start but they have not been able to hold on to many leads at the start of this season. They do have their one win, but they could be staring a third defeat in the face if they can't turn things around in the second half here in Jamaica, Queens, New York. Teams are back out at the start of the second half. It'll be New York City going from left to right. New York City get the second half started. New England did make a couple of alterations. Colby Quinones and Malcolm Fry both exiting. Marcos Diaz, who scored last time out against Cincinnati. He is on, as is the midfielder Maciel in the second half for Richie Williams group as they try to come back from a two goal deficit. It's turning out to be a goal fest weekend for match week five in MLS Next Pro. Had the 5 5 thriller between Red Bulls 2 and Chicago earlier. New York, despite throwing away a four goal lead, still came out with two points. Give incredible credit to coach Tyon Dia's group for Chicago. The 
find a way back to get something. Four goal deficit. Remarkable recovery. And of course, we saw incredible display from SKC2 earlier this evening, putting four past Houston. After they had struggled with Dynamo Dose over the years, they've beaten them twice already. This season, a 2-1 win and now a 4-0 win for Benny Failhopper's group. And of course, there's still three more games to be finished up tonight alongside this one. So there could still be plenty more goals to add on. And of course, yesterday, Chattanooga, we talked about it earlier, put up half a dozen on Miami in a 6-2 win. Ron Underwood must be thrilled with the way his team played again in front of the Chattahooligans. We'll see how Marcos Diaz and Maciel impact the game for the Revs in the second half. They're both certainly game changers. Diaz's goal against Cincinnati was his first of the season. He has, of course, scored here at Belson against New York City FC two multiple times over the years. Marcos Diaz, we'll see if he can help the New England cause yet again tonight. Williams loved the Revs' reaction to the Cincinnati loss in the early stages of this game, but it has gone sideways for them ever since. They lost their lead. They're now down by two. Of course, New York City also have to improve on their consistency. Can they keep it up after a really strong opening half? deflected out of play. It took a little while for a decision. It's going to be a New York City throw. Maciel looks to clear. Pana Yotu. All the way back to help New England defensively. Now Bulma tries to direct traffic. Souza plays through for Maciel. This is Panayotu's scored New England's early goal. Has to play in DRBN. It's cleared away by Rando, who made a big save on DRBN in the first half. Two's quick feet, not quick enough to keep the ball in play. Goes back to New York. It was nearly a giveaway. Diaz with some good pressure. Leo Hope gunned, maybe one too many touches there. Almost lost out for New York. Looked to be a push in the back on Souza. He's let it go, and then Korovic is bundled into. Carrizo. To the far side. Tried to find McFarlane. It's going to stay with New York. Marcos Diaz now not thrilled with the referee's decision. Leo Hope Gund resets. Jimenez on a hat trick. Lovely run. He's brought down by Victor Souza, who sees yellow for bringing down his counterpart. And it 
It's going to lead to a New York City set piece opportunity here. Well, Ronald Aravalo has been on set piece duties for New York tonight. Well, it looked pretty clear cut. Souza threw out an arm. Carrizo and Aravalo. Aravalo's brought in service. He's gone for goal a couple of times. Carrizo certainly capable. Aravalo bends in a beauty, and it went past everybody. There's multiple appeals from the New York City players that it should have been a corner, or maybe even more than that. It's a goal kick. Really good ball in from Aravalo again. Jackson's able to play New England out of trouble. Here's Bulma. Bulma surges ahead. Panayotu. Up ahead by Suarez. McIntosh. And look at Aravalo. Tremendous effort. Battling through two challenges and comes out with it for New York City. And then he's brought down by Diaz. Incredible extra effort by Ronald Aravalo. Jimenez has the two goals, Carrizo's on the score sheet, but Ronald Aravalo has been an unsung hero for New York tonight. He's really done well. Texas and Tacoma have kicked off. It's 1-0 to North Texas. More games to come after that later on tonight. Here's Maciel. And a Yotu back to him. DRBN, muscled by Rosansky. Chance for New York to go the other way. Aravalo, Carrizo was asking for it on this near side. Aravalo continues his run. Carrizo helps out. Oh, Yave. McFarlane. Reset for Hope Guns. Nice job by Escobar to win it back. A bit wasteful with his pass up ahead, looking for Panayotsu. See Richie Williams just trying to settle his guys down. 10 minutes into the start of the second half and they haven't really made any headway. Good step by Bulma, this is Diaz. Nice trickery here, Marcos Diaz gets through. It's saved and then parried away after Rando was able to touch it off of a New England boot. And as soon as I say that New England hadn't made any progress, they nearly got it back to 3-2. But now here comes New York the other way, Bayera. 
but still by Era, and it shot is right down the middle for Jackson. It's back to that end-to-end -to -end sequence that we saw in the first half. It was really chances galore for a big chunk of the first 45. A little glimpse of it again here. Bulma, fouled, free kick for the Revs. Panayo two switches the point of attack. This is McIntosh. DRBN. Maciel. Ben's in a beauty, this is McIntosh. Oh, good save by Rando. Hands on heads from the Revs contingent. May have hit off of Rando's head in the process. Another big save from the New York goalkeeper. Souza. Bulma. Masiel is going to recycle it. This portion of the match is brought to you by St. John's University, the official undergraduate partner of New York City FC2. Aroyave, carried by Escobar, wins a throw in for New York. Bulma. Almost floated ahead. It was a dangerous header by Rio Hope Gund. Not sure he realized how close Jack Panayotu was to that, and I think Jack Panayotu realized that he could have possibly gotten a boot onto that. Bayera dispossessed by Maciel. Panayotu, New England growing in confidence now. Back to Panayotu. Oh, and Bayera does well sweeping in and winning the ball back. He looks to send New York on their way. Here's Aravalo. Now Jimenez. Jimenez on the turn. Still Jimenez going for a hat trick. It is blazed over the top. Bulma somehow kept that in. You can't keep possession for New England. The best clearance by Rando, and that gives it right back to the Revs as we approach the hour mark. McIntosh. Was floated over the top by Farovic. that gets back onto it. McIntosh, Panayotu, DRBN leaves it. Maciel for Bulma. Bulma tries to bend one and it's a bit wasteful in the end. Goes out for a goal kick and looks like there's gonna be a few changes for both teams here. Looks like Jonathan Shore 
He's going to come on from Maximo Carrizo. McFarlane looks like he's going to leave as well. And Chris Tyau is going to come on. Escobar and Novik are off. Patrick Leal comes on for New England. It's Jonathan Shore who sends it ahead. Another player who's impressed Matt Pilkington to this point. the two New England changes. Escobar out, Barovic out. We saw Patrick Leal come on along with Alex Monis as well. So both teams shuffling the deck a bit. Alex Monis scored on debut for New England. In Chester, Pennsylvania against Philadelphia Union 2 at Subaru Park. So two changes a piece. Is this maybe a spark? Can New England get back into the game? It just takes one goal. Paniotu's provided one. Is he fouled there? No, says the referee. McIntosh picks up the pieces. McIntosh, it's cleared out of play. Leong settles to get the revs a throw. But they don't keep it for much longer. It goes right back to New York. Just joining us, all four of the goals came in the first half. Jimenez on a hat trick, Carrizo, who's since been substituted, and Panayotu the goal scores between the two sides. Here is Panayotu. Tried to thread it through from Monis. Panayotu again wins a corner for the Revs. From the corner. Oh, it was headed on. It was deflected off the six yard line. It was a real chance for the Revs. Now then, here comes New York the other way. Calhera plays a ball in behind for Bayera. Bayera is stifled by McIntosh. Great effort from him again. To flex out of play with 25 minutes left. This portion of the match is brought to you by Adidas, the official kit supplier for New York City FC2. Oh, it's one back nicely by Shore. Shore goes on, he's blocked by Souza. Oh, and then the ball ran up on both players' chests inside the penalty area. A couple handball appeals came in from the New York contingent. It's gonna be a free kick against Jimenez, and he's booked for arguing with the referee afterwards. <laughs> Oh, 
Jimenez for New York gets booked. So he'll have to walk a bit of a tightrope in this last 25 minutes or so. Somehow the ball falls from Marcos Diaz. And it's going to be DRBN who scores! Gavork DRBN making his first pro start for the Revs. Has his first goal for them as well, and it's 3 2. They've been waiting for a jolt, a moment to get back in the match. And DRBN provides them with that moment. And it's game on again, here in the Big Apple. A wonderful finish from Kavork DRBN. Paying off the trust of Richie Williams, giving him that start. We've seen the New England fight that we were expecting in this second half. Now it really feels like this one's up for grabs. New York City's potential first next pro win is certainly not over the line yet. Long way to go here. McIntosh. Resets for Lille. Bulma bends one in. It's going to be headed out for a corner by Leong as New England have gained some new life and some new confidence. Chance to equalize here for New England. Headed off the line at Calhera. Bulma retrieves for the refs. Sends in a very poor ball by his standards back into the penalty area. And for some reason, Suarez thought he was going to get to that and takes out Rando. And the referee is going to take out a yellow card, it appears. Not sure why Suarez has any qualms about that. Rando is slow to continue. So it looks like New York City are going to make a couple of alterations. We're told Rio Hope Gund and Jacob Aroyave are set to come off here for New York City. And in the process, we'll see Alexander Housechild and Steve Bednarski come on for New York. We'll leave Matt Pilkington with one change left to make. The Oak teams now, just one remaining substitution. minutes left in what's been a thrilling chapter in this next pro rivalry. Definitely still feels like there's a few more stories to be told amongst it. Bulma holding back Aravalo. He sees yellow. Yellow cards are piling up here for New England. It's now three players on the pitch with one, five for the game. Just one for New York through Jimenez. Yeah. 
Aravalo. Re-established New York's two goal lead. His cross actually hit the wall. New England had set up in front. In the end, NYCFC are forced back. Ayera back to Rando, looks to be okay. Oh, Aravalo's got time and space here for New York. And he plays it across, Calhera scores! With the aid of a deflection, Taylor Calhera with a captain's goal for New York. And City have regained their two goal cushion, it's 4-2. The goals just keep on coming. Aravalo unmarked as he played it into the penalty area and he hits it with the outside of his right boot. Calhara and he finds a deflection which allows it to go through and into the back of New England's net. Just when it looked like the Revs were going to twist turn this game around. New York grab it back. And Diaz immediately from the restart is brought down. Yellow card is out, tempers are fraying. It's starting to kick off here a bit in Queens. Waiting to see who the yellow card is for. If Marcos Diaz isn't careful, he's gonna talk himself into a yellow. Waiting to see who is going to be summoned here by the referee, it's Leong. And Leong is booked for New York City. And again, Marcos Diaz has made his point. He doesn't need to keep berating the referee here. It's very clear what the referee was going to do. It was gonna be a yellow card all the way. Him talking more only heightens the potential of himself getting booked. It happened to Malcolm Fry earlier in the first half. Almost talked himself into a booking. And he was already on one. These are the moments where cooler heads tend to prevail. Both teams have to keep their composure down the stretch. This is still very much a live game. A lot can still happen. Panayotu from the cross. It comes up short. Recycled by Bulma. All the way back to Jackson. DRBN is going to be forced back. McIntosh lost track of it. It's going to go out of play. This portion of the match is brought to you by Etihad Airways, the official airline partner of New York City, FC2. Here, co here comes New York on the attack. Aravalo, again left in open space, couple of step overs, and New England just about get enough on it to clear their lines. goes out of play because there's a New England player down with 15 minutes left. Looks like it's Bulma who is struggling a bit here for the Revs. Number 37, Steve Abednarski, replaced number 20, Jacob Aragavis. 
Another substitution for New York City, number 61, Alexander Hostile, with race number two, Rio. Meanwhile, New England is going to make their last change. It is Bulma who's going to come out. Stabon Lopera is going to come on to replace him. It's a like for like change, pretty much. Lopera is more of a defender. is Richie Williams' his last change he can make. New England were on their way to potentially overturning this two goal deficit. When it was 3-1, they got it to 3-2. Calhera responded. That's where we stand. Another thriller. Match week five of MLS Next Pro. Haven't quite had 10 goals in this one. We've had half a dozen. And plenty of drama. Panayotu recycles for New England. Well, this played out Why This is Monis. Monis into the middle. There's a chance for Diaz. Aravalo clears. Should mention, we talked about it earlier, New York City have only kept a clean sheet twice against New England as DRBN gets past the first challenge and Maciel will hit it. And he sends it high and deep into the New York night. Just to finish the thought, New York City FC2 have never conceded more than two goals against Revs 2. New England, of course, have two already. So one more would end that stat's existence, but still feels like anything can happen in this game as Souza plays with fire at the back, but puts it out just in time. New England need two goals in 12 minutes to send us to penalties. Been in behind Bayera. Under pressure, just about gets it away from DRBN. It was won initially by Lopera, but he loses out in the long run as it's won back by Aravalo. Lovely little give and go, and Aravalo has it on the near side. Calhera plays it across, it's five! Touched in by the substitute, Jonathan Shore for his third goal of the season. And New York City could very well be finishing off a five-star performance against their rivals. It's 5-2 to NYCFC. I'll give McIntosh credit. He was there to get a touch onto it, but it wasn't a definitive one. Jonathan Shore, who continues to bring a spark and quality to this New York City team, adds his name onto the score sheet. And New York have five in a seven goal thriller. Oh, what a night here in New York. Goals galore and a fantastic New York City performance to this point. Still 10 minutes left. One back again by New York. Sure. Lovely ball through Aravalo has his shot stopped by Jackson. Well, that would have finished the job completely. 
If it hasn't been already. Maciel out wide. Nine minutes left. Here's McIntosh. Oh, he le leaves the ball behind him. Monis helps out. But he's dispossessed by Shore. Leal. Does New England have one more run left in them? McIntosh. Leal again. It's going to have to happen soon for the Revs. They are to make this interesting. Jimenez, who's on a hat trick, he's dragged down. Free kick. Zansky will reset for New York. It would be pretty sweet for him if New York can finish this off, not just his first win at City, but to do it against his former club. And maybe just add a little cherry on top of what could be a very New York City Sunday for the boys in blue, as they're known around these parts. Calhera. Aravalo. Maciel. Gonna continue to bring the fight for New England. Looks like it's gonna be a third loss for Revs 2 at the start of this campaign. They will, in the end, they see New York jump ahead of them in the table. Put New York City right back in the mix in these early weeks for a playoff spot as well. Again, there's a long way to go before that's fully decided. And they are starting to see some rain come down a bit here in Queens. And frankly, it's been raining goals this weekend all around MLS Next Pro. Seven here, we had 10 in Montclair. Something about the tri-state area today. Four in Kansas. SKC two as well. We had six in Tennessee yesterday for Chattanooga. It's been a fantastic and fabulous five for New York City so far tonight. DRBN. Oh, a challenge comes in, I think that's Leal. It's a free kick for New York. Chance for another one, Jimenez. Oh, it's a penalty. Referee points to the penalty spot. As the rain really continues to come down here, it's gonna be a yellow card, I think, for Jackson for descent. Souza was incensed for New England, didn't think that it was a legitimate penalty. Jimenez draws it for New York City. Well, how about this from Jonathan Jimenez? He hands the ball off 
had a chance to complete a hat trick. He's given it to Ronald Aravalo, who steps up for New York and scores for New York. It's a scintillating city performance from NYCFC tonight. 6-2, they lead over New England. It's a resounding result. And it looks like it is going to be New York City's first MLS Next Pro win of the season now. And there's not many doubts left about that. Ronald Aravalo has been phenomenal tonight. He's earned that goal. Very unselfish of Jimenez to give him the chance to pay off a tremendous performance. And just like Chattanooga did against Miami yesterday, New York leads by six goals to two. Goals everywhere you look. Diaz. Marcos Diaz, it's a wonderful run. Decent strike. In the end, it's saved by Rando. Diaz follows through. Did not need to do that. He just bumps right into Bednarski after the play was over. And the New England frustrations are really starting to show. Just hasn't been their night. And it's unraveled a bit over these last 15 minutes. a free kick for New York City. It's all said and done. And then Matt Pilkington, it looks like, is going to make one more change. Jonathan Jimenez, we're told, is going to leave us. Jimenez is off. A brace for him. Could have gotten his hat trick the penalty spot, he left it for Ronald Aravalo. How classy is that? Aravalo made no mistake to give New York City a sixth goal. And he's gonna be Adam Bass who's on. Jimenez's his night is done. Now Matt Pilkington and his group can taste their first victory of the season. It's just around the corner now. New York City satisfied with a sixth, maybe not. But that pass in behind from Bednarski is gonna reach the advertising boards. It's a goal kick as we're into the 90th minute. <coughs> One thing we can tell you is we have selected a man of the match, but we should add on the end of that that it was a very difficult decision. New York City, well, frankly, at least half of the starting 11 are in with a shout. Feel that at the end of the game, of course, but we should add that it could have been five or six different New York City players tonight. They've all been tremendous. Specifically, the end of the first half, for these last 20 minutes of the second half. And New England have had a couple of answers, but they have been overrun in the latter stages of the second half. Unless the goal scoring continues, it's going to be New York City outscoring New England three goals to one in both halves as well as we enter four added minutes at the end of this enthralling contest. Texas have added another goal against Tacoma. They lead 2-0 in the Lone Star State. The town and Real Monarchs have kicked off 
as well. And then, of course, Ventura County LAFC 2 to finish off the night. Still plenty of next pro action to finish off your weekend after we're done here in Asagi Gotham in Queens. Free kick for New York City. That was blasted away. Referee spots it. And it looks like another yellow card is going to come out for New England. Maciel gets the yellow card for kicking the ball away. Ball sent to head, Jackson collects. In the live table, New York City will jump up to eighth place, just on the bottom half of the playoff line. New England, who started the day in 10th, will take New York City's old spot. Oh, and it was nearly another. Calhera made a good run in behind. He's already scored tonight. New York nearly had another. minute and change here. Panayotu opened the scoring what feels like forever ago back in the eighth minute. That's right, New England led in this game at one point. New York City then made it their own after that. They scored three straight goals, made it 3-1. New England got back into it again. They made it 3-2. Since then, it has been a New York City avalanche of goals. Bian is struggling here. Revs too. Richie Williams does not have any more changes left. Rbn's gonna have to try and fight through it over the last minute or so. New York City again taking advantage of open space. Sure. The ball go out of play. It'll stay with New York as the final seconds tick down. New York City have really checked all of the boxes off tonight. They've been consistently strong for most of the game. A few lapses here and there, but that clinical edge, that finishing touch that just hasn't been lacking in the league, at least in recent weeks, has certainly been on full display tonight. Full time here in Queens. A resounding victory for New York City FC2. They win their first MLS Next Pro game of the season in scintillating style. They beat New England by six goals to two. And they jump up to eighth place in the Eastern Conference table in MLS Next Pro. Multiple players shine for Matt Pilkington's group tonight. And it really was a glorious win over their Eastern Conference rivals in the rain here in New York City as New England about to take another one on the chin and go back to the drawing board. Like we said earlier, today's man of the match was a difficult one to pick. A number of players for New York City could have been selected. We wish we could have given it to multiple players, but we've given it to Jonathan Jimenez. A brace for him, he also gave the penalty to Ronald Arevalo in a classy touch as well, as he could have easily had a hat trick.
Man of the Match is presented by Adidas. And certainly Jonathan Jimenez was one of many that deserved it tonight in a remarkably resounding performance from New York City FC2 in a 6-2 win. Just what Matt Pilkington would have been hoping for for New York City. They get their first win of the season, and they do it at a rival's expense as New England lose this one on the road. It's now back-to-back -back league defeats for the refs. For our entire MLS Next Pro broadcast crew, I'm Sean St. Jacques. Once again, our final score is New York City 6, New England 2. It's been a remarkable day of goals in MLS Next Pro. Don't forget, you can watch MLS Next Pro all season long, the MLS Season Pass on Apple TV and MLSNextPro.com. Good night from Gotham. This copyrighted broadcast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.